What is going on then guys, welcome to a new video. So I thought it's been a while then since I've just kind of sat here and had a one-to-one -one discussion with you guys and gone through an important topic. So today then we're gonna be talking about one product dropshipping stores. I know I'm a bit late to the party on this, but people still ask me about it. So I thought, what the hell, um, do a video like this and I can give you kind of like the pros and cons from my point of view and the strategy that I would use then to make the most out of them. So as always then, I've got my phone with me, just some notes on there to make sure I don't forget to go through anything. Um, but before we get into point one then, as always, I am giving away a free one-to-one -one call with me on this video, on every single video. And all you've got to do then to enter is simply like the video and leave a comment down below. And the winner will be announced then in tomorrow's video. And if you commented on my previous video then, make sure you stay tuned to the end where I'll be announcing the winner. So that being said then guys, let's jump straight into today's topic. And point number one then, branding. So when it comes to any business, especially in the e-commerce world, then branding is key to the longevity of a business because essentially especially with drop shipping as well actually there's that it's no secret then that the profit margins aren't very good and branding is the difference then between a business that lasts say only six months to a year to a business that can keep going on and on and on and essentially what a brand does is it builds loyal customers and those loyal customers are essentially what keeps what makes your business as profitable as possible because they keep coming back to spend more and more money plus they spread the word with their friends and family who then come and spend money with you as well. So the reason then branding is really good when it comes to one product stores is because you're only selling one particular product, then it's obviously a lot easier to brand a store and simply get your message across. As soon as a customer sees what product you're selling, then they know what essentially what your company is all about. So things like your company vision and your mission statement that you can share with your customers is a really important thing and it's really easy to do with one product stores. So if you I don't think I've ever spoken about mission statements before, but it's definitely a really important topic. I'll put some screenshots on the screen now of some of the biggest companies in the world and what their mission statements are. And it's a great way to essentially build a relationship and rapport with your customer because if they read and see your mission statement and they know what vision essentially that you're that you're trying to achieve, if they agree with it, then it, it can make the difference between them purchasing from you and say going onto Amazon or eBay and purchasing from there instead. So to give you guys an example of how it can how it can be so powerful is if you're in the dog niche, for instance, then your mission statement might be to rehome a thousand dogs. And you wanna be sharing that message as much as possible on social media, on your store, just as many ways as possible. And then when people come onto your site and they see your mission statement, you could have like some sort of countdown clock or some sort of meter that fills up that shows people how close to your goal you are to achieving it. And people who love dogs, if they come onto your store and see your dog products, they might see the exact same product on Amazon for maybe even 10 pound cheaper, but the fact that you've got a mission statement and it really resonates with your customer, then they won't mind spending that little bit extra because they know that it's going towards a good cause. And that really is the difference or the power in branding then and how it can really make a difference um, to whether people spend money with you or whether they spend money with someone else. So that was point number one then. If you want me to do more videos, by the way, on mission statements and visions and branding, then all you've got to do is simply let me know one way or the other, reach out, leave a comment down below. Um, and moving on to number two then, which is time. So when it comes to setting up a one product store, then it's a lot quicker and easier to do for obvious reasons. Obviously you've only got one product to add to your store. So there's only one bunch of images, only one product title, only one price you've got to think about, only one product description that you've got to think about and write out, one lot of features and benefits. So obviously in terms of the volume of data and images you have to put on your site is a lot less. So when it comes to setting one product stores up, then obviously it's a lot quicker. So it's a small thing, but definitely a pro when it comes to one product dropshipping stores. Moving on to pro number three then, which is actually a really big one when it comes to one product stores. And that is when it comes to actually managing the store. So obviously with the general store, if you've got loads of different products, then that's potentially, because there's more variables, what I'm trying to say is because there's more variables with things like a general store and a niche store, then essentially there's more room for things to go wrong. So you're gonna be dealing with more suppliers, therefore your relationship with each and every supplier might not be as well. And the reason this is so powerful then is because with a one product store, you're only selling one product and it's the chances are, or it should be only coming from one supplier. So 
if you're doing 10,000 of order 10,000 pounds worth of orders or dollars whatever um, through one supplier versus through three or five different suppliers then you're going to have a better relationship and better buying power which is in key important um, especially with e-commerce you're going to have more buying power with that one supplier and therefore they're more likely to work with you they're more likely to process your orders first because essentially you're a bigger customer to them so they want to look after you they don't want to lose you as a customer and because you have this buying power then when it comes to negotiating things like price or if you move into private labeling then it's going to pay off massively um, and you're going to get favorable results so things like managing your store then is a is a really big plus when it comes to one product stores moving on then to the final pro point of one product stores um, is marketing so whether that's Facebook Instagram or email marketing then because you've only got one product which is going to be in one niche then any traffic any data that goes through your site that Facebook can use any email that you gather um, is all relevant and it's all going towards one big cause so to illustrate then how powerful this is again is if you compare this to a general store um, so one product stores versus general stores, if both get a thousand visits, then for the one product store, all thousand of those visits and all that data from those from that traffic can be used for marketing in your store because it's all coming, it's all gonna be similar traffic that's all coming for that same reason, that one product. Whereas versus a general store, that might be split 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%. There might be 250 people coming to look at dog products, 250 people coming to look at cats, at golf products, at baseball products, whatever it is. And every email you gather as well with a one product store, again, they're only there for one reason. So all of those emails can be used for essentially the same the same product that you're marketing whereas versus a general store you're only going to have 250 leads per niche if that makes sense so what i'm trying to say then is when it comes to marketing then all data is useful and relevant so essentially you're just going to build it up a lot quicker and the more you have then then the more essentially more customers you can bring back onto your store the more people you can retarget and the more money you're going to make essentially so those being said then i'm just going to go through the cons um, there's not a lot really to go through, but they're all pretty big ones. So number one then is flexibility. So obviously when it comes to marketing different products, because it's a one product store, you can't get away with just sticking any product you want on there without redesigning the whole store. So when it comes to things like selecting products to build your store around, if you don't choose the right product from the offset, which can be difficult to do as a beginner, um, it took me... I think I sold probably or tried five or six different products before I found that one winner. So if I chose one product stores to begin with, then that would have been five or six different stores I would have had to design, buy domains for, um, and just think of different marketing ways. And it just would have it would have it would have been a lot more time consuming and a lot more financially costly as well. So number one con then is flexibility. Moving on to the second one then, which is average order value. So everybody wants to make more money and one product stores versus say general stores or niche stores then your average order value it can be difficult to make that as high now depending on what the product is obviously it's going to vary but in general with one pro with niche stores and general stores then because you've got loads of other products on there you've got a higher percentage chance of people coming onto your store for the product you're marketing, but then seeing something else and being like, actually I quite like that product, so I'm gonna buy that as well. And obviously you won't get that with a one product store because the, there's only one product essentially for them to buy. Another thing as well is when it comes to things like cross sales and upsells, then obviously on a one product store, then unless you offer them at checkout, um, the kind of like typical strategy or method that people use is literally just one single product but if you do decide to go to one product store then i definitely 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 recommend having at least one upsell or cross sell um, because this is going to contribute massively towards your average order value which is key to longevity and drop shipping and being profitable however i will touch on that a bit later on in the video con number three then when it comes to one product stores is the design so i've had quite a few one-to-one -one calls with people using the one product store uh, method and I've had a look at their stores and to put it bluntly really, it looks really amateurish. Um, I don't think there's any themes at the moment in the Shopify marketplace, certainly in the free section. 
um, that are designed for one product stores. So it can be difficult to make a professional looking um, one product store. So just bear that in mind. Um, and it's a really important factor as well because as small business owners, particularly in the beginning where you might not have many followers on social media, then people are gonna be pessimistic and they're gonna be looking for things to make sure that you're legit. And if the slightest thing can put them off um, and make them just leave your site and not make a purchase. So if your store looks really amateurish and you've got loads of white space and the layout just doesn't work, then that can be enough to put people off and not make a purchase, which is obviously not what we want to do. And then the final con I wanna talk about with one product stores, um, you can kind of look at this in different ways, but I thought I would mention it as a con because in my opinion, when it comes to one product stores, because there's not loads and loads of different products, there's only one particular product, you have to market it and illustrate it and demonstrate it in a really professional way if you're gonna get somebody to buy into it. And this can be difficult to do depending on what the product is. And as a bare minimum, minimum, then I would recommend buying that product and taking your own custom photography, do different diagrams, um, different videos of it, different angles, and pretty much just have as much information as possible about a particular product. So when it comes to having a professional one product dropshipping store, then Number one, you'll probably have to invest in a custom theme that you'll have to pay for, which is an added cost, which you wouldn't have to do with a general store or a new store. The free ones on Shopify are more than adequate. Um, number two is the photography as well. You need professional photos if you're only gonna have one product on your store. If you've got loads of different products and, the, and then just stock images, then you can get away with it. Whereas with a one product store, they're not gonna be large enough, they're gonna be pixelated, there's not gonna be enough detail, they're not gonna be zoomed in. And in my opinion, like I said, just with a one product dropshipping store, I think if you're only gonna have literally one single product, then you need to, you need to be on top of things and you need to have professional photographs um, and everything that goes with it that comes with an added cost that you wouldn't get with the other stores. So all that being said then guys, that's all my pros and cons for the one product dropshipping store. If you think I've left anything out then, uh, make sure you leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think the pros are, what you think the cons are. Um, it's always interesting to get different people's point of views. And that being said then, do I actually recommend them or how do you make the most of them? Should you use them? Should you, use, should, should you not use them? So what I would say then is completely stay away from one product dropshipping stores until you've had a chance to actually properly, properly test a product and you know it works. That way you get the best of both worlds. So you avoid pretty much every single con that I've just spoken about, but then take advantage, full advantage of all the pros that come with a one product store. So how I would play it then is, and this is kind of like my beginner strategy, is if you are a beginner then when it comes to picking products that are gonna be winners straight off the bat, then you're probably not gonna pick one first time. It might not be second, third, fourth, or even fifth time. So what you need is a general store where you can get away with having 30 plus different products from completely different niches and you can focus on one product at, one product at a time, marketing each product. Um, and when you find a winner, so something you've been able to market for two plus weeks and be profitable on, then take that product and start building a one product store around it. Start coming up with a brand, start thinking about a vision that you wanna put that you want that company to move in, come up with a mission statement, and then start relentlessly building a following on social media, sharing your mission statement with people, telling people who you are, what you're on about, um, and this will drive traffic to your store, and if you drive the right traffic who agree with what your mission, with, that agree what your mission statement is and what the vision is, then these are gonna be supporters and followers, religious followers of your company. They're gonna buy your product and they're gonna tell their friends about it as well. If you think about it with any niche, people who spend time within a niche, whether it's golf, dogs or anything, then they tend to know other people in that niche as well. So every time you provide good service or somebody finds you and they really agree with who you are and what you're doing, then they're bound to tell their friends and family who in turn will come onto your store and perhaps buy a product as well. And this is key to surviving and the longevity of a company. And that is why branding is so important. 
So to summarize the whole video then, start with a general, or at least my strategy, sorry, start with a general store as a testing ground. Um, just get a half decent looking store, enough not to put people off so they're willing to make a purchase. When you've tested a product for two plus weeks profitably, move that product onto a one onto a one product drop shipping store, start building your brand um, around it, go with one supplier, um, start building up a social media following on absolutely every single platform, migrate your Facebook pixel as well. So any data you've gathered from the previous store, you can, you can move straight over so you don't have to start from square one. Um, and that way you can st essentially just start making sales from day one, you don't have to mature your pixel anymore. And because you've built a brand then around this product and you've got a good mission statement that people within your niche agree with, then if anything, your sales are going to increase, your sales volumes are gonna increase, and the more sales you put through a particular supplier gives you more buying power, more negotiating power. So contact your suppliers, get them to knock your price down, get them to create a custom VIP listing in AliExpress, which is a reduced price just for you. And then if things really start to take off, then you look. You can look at things like private labeling, buying in bulk, sending them to fulfillment centers in your local countries where it's selling best. Um, and there's just pretty much just endless opportunities. So that being said then guys, I think I've just about covered absolutely everything I wanted to when it comes to one product dropshipping stores. Um, let me know what you think to this video. Did you enjoy it? If you're still watching, then of course, thank you very much. Um, and if you did enjoy it, then please do leave a like as well. Um, and that being said then guys, let's get into announcing the winner of the one-to-one -one call from my previous video. So here we are then guys on my previous video, um, testing and scaling Facebook ads with $200. If you haven't seen it yet, make sure you go and check it out. Um, as you can see, a lot of people seem to be enjoying it, 82 likes, which is just absolutely mind blowing. Um, so thank you very much guys, I really do appreciate it. So I'm just gonna copy the um, video URL, go across to a random comment picker, um, and let's see who the winner will be then of the previous video. So who's it gonna be? We have Jithin Nair, who puts king, fire, love. So thanks very much, mate. Appreciate the comment, appreciate the love. Um, make sure you reach out then, send me a DM on one of my social medias, all the links out in the video description, and we'll get that call arranged. And that being said then guys, thanks very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a comment and like this one then if you wanna be entered into the draw for the next video, and I'll see you in it.